Hi, this is Stacey Chalemi from The Advisor, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. Today, I'm very excited because I have a guest with me. It's David Essel. He has he has been on our show before, and he is a coach and a counselor, and he does he works on lots of different areas. But today, we're going to focus on one topic today, and we're going to talk about work-life balance. And he's here to help people and show people how they can have both a fa fabulous career and also have a very happy, healthy, and productive family life too. So David, welcome to the show again. I'm so happy to have you back. And why don't you tell the audience a little about yourself and what you do? Yeah, Stacy, it's great to be back with you as well. And I just love all the different projects that you have going on. So you keep rocking it, girl. <laughs> um, you know, I believe it or not, I can't even believe what I'm going to tell you because it, it seems like it just was about six months ago. But 43 years ago, I started this work. Wow. And as a matter of fact, on our website, We've done about 150,000 one-on-one -on -one sessions as a counselor wow. and as a coach over 43 years. And we added them all up and it blew our mind, right? So, yeah. so we've been doing this a long time. You know, I've, I've hosted radio and TV forever. We have um, 13 books, five that went number one. So, you know, we do a lot of different things. But yeah. this topic, Stacey, is so dear to my heart. And I'm going to tell you why. I have struggled with work-life balance my whole career, right? Yeah. It's, it's the truth. And what happened during COVID was, you know, there's some good things actually that came out of COVID for, for some of us. And for other people, it was, you know, really, really tough. Right. We had a very difficult time. But one of the things that came out was that I realized that I had fallen way back into my workaholic ways. Yes. Right. And so, and how, and let me tell you how I realized it. And, and maybe some of our audience will recognize this. When the work started to slow down, my mm -hmm. anxiety went through the roof. Same thing happened to me. I understand. Right? Okay. Yes. And that's a sign of workaholism because a, a, a normal entrepreneur, executive, business owner, you know, that, that isn't a workaholic would go, yeah. oh, I have some time. I can relax and write a book. I can cut back some expenses here so I don't have to worry yeah. about them. You know, but but the rest of us, we push harder and harder. And so- the first six months of, of the pandemic, I was pushing so hard. I was creating yes. one program after another. And then I realized that I had no balance at all. At a time, Stacy, that we had the time to start to practice balance, right? right. Mm -hmm. Most of us during the early stages of the pandemic didn't know what was going on, but all we knew was that we were going to work from home or our work hours had been cut in half yes. or something like that, right? And right. Or we lost our job, I mean, which yeah. is a very difficult thing to do. Oh, yeah. So then I, I started looking at what's the first step? to move into work-life balance. And when we right. talk about work-life balance, we're not talking about perfect balance where every day is exceptional and you never yes. have a challenge. You know, that's unrealistic. Right. But we say this, when you're really looking to get more balance, you have to find out first, what are the blocks that are keeping you in this workaholic mode, in yes. this worry mode, in this anxiety mode? Like, what are we doing that's actually increasing that procrastination? What are we right. doing that's increasing the anxiety? So the very first step in balance is to say, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm doing way too much social media. I'm watching way too much TV. Um, I'm arguing too much about politics. I'm, you know, so we look at what is getting in the way right. of work-life balance first, right? Um, I haven't, and, and here's something really big. A lot of people, when they start to have problems in their relationship, put more hours into the workplace, yes, right? Definitely. And, and so we want to say, if we're working many more hours now, let's look at all the reasons why. Yeah. If one of them is that we you know, aren't getting along with our partner or we're challenged by our children and we stay at work to avoid it, those things are only going to get bigger. Right. And and we completely lose any chance of balance. Right. So so yeah. we want to really look at Stacey in our course that we teach people and we only take people through it one on one mm -hmm. because everyone is unique. Everyone yes. is different. Right. Yes. So so we get them to first see like, you know, what are they doing that's disturbing the balance? Have they dropped their exercise program? Are they starting to eat more drugs at night? And yeah. you know that because this is up your alley too, sugar and yes. salt and, mm -hmm. you know, and our, so are we medicating our anxiety, our depression, our frustration, because that completely destroys work-life balance. Right. So What's really interesting, and every person that enters the program says the same thing. They go, David, I never thought that we would be starting off by looking for the problems. Right. 
Like, you know, people think that they're going to start the program and go, okay, here's what we need to do to be more balanced. Yeah. And, you know, so we're going to meditate more. We're going to walk more. We're going to, you know, to actually go on vacation, you know, yes. or something we haven't done. We're going to take a three day vacation if we don't take normal vacations, right? Right. Like, that would be some ways to add balance. But if we don't remove the blocks first, yes, we're not going to be able to sustain the goal of trying to be more balanced in life. Right. You know, I find that I could, I could relate to that so much. Like I find myself, like I, I have, I put such high standards and goals and I want to accomplish so much. And then it's like, when I'm doing something, it's like, the biggest problem is, okay, I, I, I'm going to stop at 6.30 or give myself a time limit and then I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. But then I look and I'm like, oh, I'm almost done. I'm almost finished. I, I just have a little more to go. But that little more to go ends up to be two, three hours. And then, you know, the day it is almost gone, you're exhausted. And when you get home with your family, you're tired and you really can't have that you know, necessary quality time that's adequate yeah. to have a healthy relationship. It's that's like, right. how do you break that? And, and Stacy, you said something really crucial. And this is what a lot of us entrepreneurs uh, deal with is that we're, a lot of us are type A, right? We're, we're type A people. And that's yeah. what gives us that juice to have our own job or have our own businesses and companies, et cetera. But the word you used is one of the biggest killers of balance. And that is perfectionism. Yes. Right. It's and so when we talked earlier about what do we need to remove? You know, are we drinking too much? Are we eating yeah. too much? You know, are we staying at work to avoid home? Right. And then right. another thing is we'd want to set up a program and it's part of our program. We help yeah. people to let go of perfectionism. Right. You know, be, because when we're a perfectionist, it sounds great, right? It sounds well, oh, you know, I'm a perfectionist. I don't let anything leave unless it's absolutely perfect. Right. And we we can create so little balance because of what you just said. Yes. I just got to finish this one thing. And this one thing is three hours long. My Lord. Right <laughs> now, the other side of it would be. I can take one more look at it and I'll do it tomorrow or I'll do it Saturday. You know, right. I'm not going to push myself today. I'm not going to push and work longer than what I said. Yeah. And the other thing we help people do is delegate. Some people, Stacey, over delegate. Mm -hmm. They they push everything off their plate, right? And right. and then other people don't delegate enough. Right. Um, and so if we find ourselves and we're working 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week, and it's not a startup. Now, if it's a startup, there is no such thing as balance. If you're right. starting a new business, throw balance out the window. If you're yeah. having a baby, <laughs> right? If if you're having a, a baby, throw balance out the window. I mean, yeah. there are certain things we you just can't even, you know, right, exactly. With. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, but how do you, you know, I find even with myself and, and other people, when you get into a regimen, when you're so used to every day doing ABC, ABC, how do you get that person to get out of that regimen? How do you get them to, to focus on a whole new way of living, a whole new way of seeing things and changing their entire lifestyle? Because you get so you get so involved in doing things a certain way. Like when you wake up, I go get that coffee and I do yeah. this and I do that. How do you break? the habits. Yeah. Beautiful question. You know, how do you break the habit of perfectionism? How do you break the habit of workaholism? Yeah. How do you break all these habits? And you know, the, the most powerful way to do it is with an accountability partner. Mm -hmm. It's the honest truth, Stacey, you know, for myself, I have a counselor I work with every week. I'm a counselor. I still have a counselor I work with every week because I want her to hold my feet to the fire, right. to do the work that I don't want to do. And so in our work life balance program for executives and entrepreneurs, what we have them do is says, let's say that there's an individual that's working 12 hours a day. Right. And we realize that a lot of that work and for a lot of people that work 12 hours a day, it may not be organized. It may not be productive work. We might be just putting out fires for 12 hours for exactly. God's sake. Exactly. Right. right. So we look at someone's day and we will have them write down every 30 minutes what happened. Right. And so this one gentleman I'm working with, he's a 12 hour a day guy. When we looked at his responsibilities, he can easily get it done in eight. And when we looked a little closer, Stacy, he could get it done in six. Really? He get, and he owns his own business. He wow. can get everything done in six hours a day and he's putting in 12. So the very first thing we did was we went and we looked at his time wasters. Okay. And so his time wasters were going on LinkedIn, going on Instagram, going on. And then his other time uh, wasters was going during the daytime when he's supposed to be working, yes. checking the stock market. Right. And then, yes. so 
as he's writing these things down, we're going, look at all these blocks of 30 minutes that are wasted. Yeah. You, you, you can check the stock once a day. You don't have to check it seven times a day. Exactly. You, you can look at your social media in the evening. Right. Get off of it during the daytime. You're wasting your time. You know, so so there's those kind of things. But the accountability. So what he does now is that he's supposed to be out of the office at 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. will be an eight hour day. Right. So at 6 p.m. every day, he texts me and he has to be honest. And he either says, I'm walking out the door or I've screwed up. I'm going to be here for 45 minutes. Right. right. So so that's the accountability. Now. If I said to him, just do your best, he's been working like this for 25 years. Yeah. His subconscious mind, the pattern is so strong. It's yes. the habit, right? Right. That he, all of a sudden, he didn't, didn't realize it's 8 p.m. <laughs> and so we've got him now back and he's successful three days out of five. Right. About the last couple of weeks, three days out of five, he leaves at six o'clock, which is a huge victory because he hasn't been able to do this in 25 yeah. years. You know, I, I find that a lot of times we don't see the flaws in ourselves. And even yes. when people are pointing it out, it goes in one ear out the other for many. And then people hit that burnout stage and they right. hit that rock bottom and then they get drained and they can't focus. And then they start to get anxious, depression, all those things, just like an addict. They, they have yeah. to hit the rock bottom. How do you stop yourself before you hit rock bottom? Is there any way to actually notice like signs that, Hey, something bad's going to happen. If you keep going in this, in this yeah. direction. Beautiful. So let's look at some of these things. If we become more irritable than we yeah. normally are, if our sleep is disrupted more regularly than it right. usually is, if we find a lack of patience with ourselves and people around us, right. uh, if we start to eat more or drink more, if we yeah. start to sm smoke more pot. If we start, mm -hmm. you know, to vape more nicotine, like, any of these are signs that something is off, yes, right? If right. Um, you know, a lot of people will drop their, oh, this is a huge one with work-life balance. Uh, most of the people I work with, both men and women, yes. who are struggling with work-life balance, Stacey, and this is going to sound pretty interesting, have no hobbies outside of work. Really? They have nothing. They've dropped it because they've gone into that workaholic mode, Makes right? Sense. So, yes. I, you know, I, I said to someone the other day, one of the executives I'm working with, when were you happiest, both at home and business, and and um uh, uh and with your hobbies? And he said, right. "Oh my God," he goes, "is when I was playing tennis three days a week." I said, "Really? When was that?" He said, "Um, ten years ago." <laughs> So he was at his happiest playing tennis three days a week. Yeah. And he traded that in for more hours in the office right Right now. So what we've got him doing, just like we have with everyone, we've got him starting small. We've got him playing tennis every Saturday. Yeah. Right. He's getting back into it. Uh, he's only done it twice. Both times he texted me right after and said, oh, yeah. my God, I'm back in love with this sport. And even once a week, that's a step towards balance, Stacey. Yes, yes. So so we tell people, you know, if you've been struggling with workaholism and you feel the depression coming on, the anxiety, the sleep issues, the increase of alcohol or food and all that kind of stuff, we need to slow down. And the very first thing I'm going to ask people to do is what we said earlier. Let's remove the blocks, the blocks. right? Let's, yes. let's get rid of the extra alcohol, the food, the extra TV, the extra social media. Let's get rid of all of that. Yes. And then- Number two is what brings you joy? What increases your energy? Right. When, when you watch a movie, a, a woman that I'm working with, the last time I, I, I said to her, when was the last time you watched a movie? Pre-COVID. <laughs> she, she hasn't watched a movie since before COVID. And, she, and when I asked her, if you have a hobby or something you love to do, I said, what is it? She goes, watching movies. When was the last time you did it? God, David, it's over three years. <laughs> you know, and, and so we look at these things, they start to slip away when workaholism comes in. Yeah. Some of these other things, time with family, time with our romantic partner, time with right. friends, going to a movie, going to a play, all of this starts to get thrown out the window. Yes. So we, so I said to her, pick a day, one day a week, you've got to watch a movie every week, one day. So we'll see how she does. Right. But so it's that balancing act of letting go of the habits that are not serving us. Yes. Before we bring in the new habits, and some of them may actually be older habits that we've just let go of, Stacey. Yes. But we, we, we need to really take a serious look at this, and I'll tell you why. 
I created this program because we were seeing such an increase in addictions in our country. Yes. And a massive increase in addictions with entrepreneurs, executives, mm -hmm. and small business owners. Right. The stress that they've gone through, you yeah. and I as well, over the last three years, none of us could have been prepared for it. Yes. So a lot of times when stress hits, we do the only thing we know, we start to grind harder. Yes. And we grind harder and we put more hours in and less hours with the home, you know? So yes. we want to look at this and that's the reason we created the program. We're seeing these people coming in that are so unhappy. Um, they used to be really fine in their careers. They used yeah. to like what they do. They're, they're not there anymore. Let, let me tell you a, a snippet of a speech that Gloria Steinem gave Okay. Um, about work-life balance. I just loved it. Now she's a phenomenal speaker. Uh, she engages the audience. Uh, she can just tell a tale like you wouldn't believe. But anyway, she goes through this whole lecture. It was wonderful. Yeah. The audience was going crazy. And then there was a microphone in the middle of the room. And she said, if there's any questions come up. So this woman comes up and kind of dejected. Her shoulders were slumping forward and she right. leaned it to the mic. And she said, Gloria, is it really possible to have it all? Is it really possible to be really balanced and have a great home life and a great career and be physically in shape and and be healthy? And, and is it really possible to have it all? And yeah. of course, everyone now is on the edge of their seat. Right. And right. Because we all want what, it all. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Like, what's she going to say? What's she going to say? So Gloria Steinem, just in the way she manages an audience is phenomenal. She stood there and didn't move for a second. Then she takes a step towards the microphone, leans in <laughs> and quietly says, yes. And she leans back. Now, all the type A's in the room, Stacey, go freaking nuts. Yes, we can have it all. Yeah. We can have a great body and a great income and a great family life. And that all this would be kind me. Of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then you've got the other half of the room that are going, we are so far behind. There's no way we're ever going to catch up. You know, and so yeah. then she says the magical statement. She leans back up and says, yes, you can have it all, but it will never be at the same time. And she and I thought that that was brilliant, you know, yes, because that should True. give us that self-compassion, which we need when we're workaholics. We need to yes. be compassionate, you know, and write letters to ourselves. You know, dear David, I know you're putting in a lot of hours, but look at what you're risking. You're exhausted. You're not sleeping great. You know, come on, let's. So we right. need that kind of compassion, right? And her her letters, her words were all about compassion. Yes, you can have it all. You know, there'll be times in life where you'll feel healthier and more fit than ever. And then yes. as you age, that may diminish some, right? Right. There'll be times in life that you'll sleep like a baby and nothing will ever bother you. And then there'll be other times that you might struggle because of stressors. Yeah. So there'll be times that your relationship is absolutely rocking and on fire. And then there'll be times that it'll be rocky as hell. You know, so, you know, she, she just put it in such a beautiful way that we've incorporated her words into our work. Yes, you can have it all. It won't be at the same time, but let's make the most of now. Yeah. What changes do we need to make today so that in six months or a year, Stacey, we're not in the same place? Exactly. Um, Three years ago, when I, you know, I looked in the mirror after the first six months of, of the pandemic and said, I am going down the tubes. I really was. I was exhausted. Yeah. I was pushing. Right. Yes. And at that point, I took a little bit of time off, stepped back, and I started writing out how I wanted to change right. over the next couple of years. And we've instituted that, you know, and we only take a few select clients a week. We're not overloading ourselves. And then the other thing that we've started doing, Stacey, and, and we realize how important this is, in all of our work with our clients, our one-on-one -on -one work, we offer them, they get an hour a week with me, either Zoom or on the phone, whatever they desire. And then five days a week, they have access to me via text messaging. Yeah. And this has been incredible. So many of the clients will text me every night and they'll just text, did this perfectly, missed this, we'll cover it tomorrow. Right. Or they'll just text me great day or they'll text me did not drink happy or whatever it is, you know, yes. but they have that connection. And so they all have access to me Monday through Friday, nine to five That's via amazing. text yeah. with a question, a comment, maybe something they just want me to know. They're really proud that happened. Yes. And this keeps us connected, united. Right. So yes. it's not like what I used to do before the pandemic is I would talk to someone on a Monday at noon. And I, their next session will be the next Monday at noon and there'll be no communication in between. Now we're constantly communicating and people are moving the needle so much faster 
because they have support and accountability five days a week. That's amazing. You know, because I see so many, so many business owners and entrepreneurs that are, you know, they're they're at a plateau and it's driving them nuts because they they need want to be here and they're here and they keep going like this and they're trying yes. everything they can to to get up the hill but nothing seems to work and that fuels them to keep wanting to try every little thing they can find every they're looking for the solution the solution and they're thinking right. oh my god i got payroll at the end of the week i need to have to do this much money in order to do this and if i want to get ahead i got to do this and they just can't like you said they can't stop they can't no. stop the worry and they can't stop yeah. the, you know, they can't stop just crying everything they can to get to that point. And, right. you know, and I, it really, you know, at the end, you could see the differences. You can see in the beginning, all the symptoms and, and, it, and in, even when you try to bring it to their attention, you know, they just, they just, you know, some of those people, they just, you know, they, they just don't want to stop. They just don't want to yeah. stop, you know, like an addict, oh. but they have to, and or yeah. else, you know, something bad's going to happen. just like an addict. Yeah. Well, and Stacey, you know, workaholism is an addiction. Yes. So it's just like heroin. It's just like anything else, you know. Now, as with all addictions, there are benefits. There are some benefits. If there weren't benefits for addictions, we would never use anything. Right. right. So what's the benefit of workaholism? Well, one of the benefits could be it get, keeps me out of the house. <laughs> I'm unhappy at home. Right. I love working. And so, you know, that's that one of the benefits, you yeah. know, if you want to look at it as a benefit would be, you know, I get time away. Of course, that's not healthy for the relationship, but a person could say, this is a benefit of me being a workaholic. I don't have to yeah. put up with the crap at home as much, you know, not healthy, but it's realistic. Um, other people are competing with others in society. And that's you know, very bad. Peer pressure, right? Yes. Like they feel they need to keep up. They feel they need to make more. And if, yes. you know, this individual in my field is making this amount of money, I've got to make more. If this person has this amount of clients, I've got to have more, you know? So we need to look at that. And it's kind of like um, a greed mentality. Yeah. I, there's never enough, you know? And so we help in our work-life balance program. We help to keep that it's never enough out of someone's existence. But yes. too many of us have bought into it. I see so when I many hit people. This, this level of money, I'll be fine. When I hit this level of clients, I'll be fine. But then we get there and we keep pushing. So, you know, again, in the program, we take people from A to Z um, and it's different for everyone. You know, one person might yeah. really struggle with working too many hours and someone else may struggle with being stuck, overwhelmed, procrastinating and not putting enough hours in. Right. So it, it really depends on the person, Stacey, but I'm so glad that we've had this conversation today yes, because me too. it's crucial. Our country is really falling apart in so many ways yes. and we can help any executive entrepreneur or small business owner get back on their feet fairly quickly with this program. That's wonderful. You know, I, I'm so glad we had this discussion because there's so many people suffering from this and, you know, it really, you know, something needs to be done. And before we go, I just have to say too, you know, you have a lot of people on the media that, that encourage it, you know, and they're, they're putting in their heads, you know, you could scale your business, you could make 7 million, you could do this, you could do this, yeah. you can do this, start with this and you'll get here and here and here. And then they fall into the trap because they want to be one of those people. And then, yes. and the cycle keeps keeps going and keeps going. That's but like right. you said, you have to break it down because when you feel those symptoms, you have to look at the blocks and really look at what's important. And one last important question, when you're handling more than one business an entrepreneur, how do they balance all those different things that they're doing? Do they focus on one thing at a time? Do they set goals? How do you like to do that with your client? Yeah. You know, it really depends on a, a lot of, of, of parameters, Stacey. One is how many different businesses are we talking about? Number one. Number two, which are the ones that need that individual's hands to be on it all the mm -hmm. time? And what are some tasks that can be delegated out to a virtual assistant or something like that? Right. Right. So we, we want to look at all of those. When you have multi businesses, we want to look at, you know, how is it that I keep these? It's almost like keeping the balls in the air. Right. Yeah. How do I keep everything afloat? And then we prioritize which because whenever you have multiple businesses, there's always one that is the main one. There's right. there's always one that outshines the other. Right. So yes. is that the one that I need my hands on the most or has it grown so well that I can hand this over to a virtual assistant, a VA and have them handle some of the posting or whatever it might be. Right. Right. Um, and, and then we might look at, do we really need all of these businesses? Exactly. You know, 
maybe we've created them and we've just kept them because we created them, but we really right. don't need them. Maybe they're more of a drag on our mindset yes. than they than they are regarding what they bring in for us, right? Right. So, Stacy, that was a great question because it goes back again to remove first. Yes. Add second. Yes. Remove the block first, add second, right? Yes. So, and we've done that in our business. Oh my God, we've removed so many programs that we've had over the years um, because they were performing okay, right. but not relative to the work we put into promoting them. Exactly, yes. So we we Makes took away sense. a bunch of programs so that we're more focused now. And that might be something that uh, an entrepreneur with multiple businesses would want to look at. That's great. Now you have programs on your website for, for burnout also. Yeah. Yeah. When they go there, all they have to do is look for the executive coaching button and with the executive coaching, that's the school for life, work balance and burnout and workaholism. So just go to talkdavid.com, the easiest website in the world to remember talkdavid.com and look for the executive button, executive coaching, click on that. And you'll find out all about the work-life balance program. And if they want one-on-one -on -one coaching with you, where do, where do they go to find out more of how to contact you and, and schedule and a appointment? That's right at the website, talkdavid.com. Um, and we also, as you know, Stacy, we cover everything in the world, you know? So if, if someone's watching the show and they go, God, I'd like to work with David, but work-life balance is my issue. Yeah. You know, we do grief and relationships and addictions. We, we cover everything. Right. Uh, but today we wanted to focus on this because it's so yeah. needed. It is so needed in our society. And I thank you so much for coming back to share some of these great ideas because I think it's gonna, just listening to the ideas that you just shared, I think is gonna wake a lot of people up and give them some insight. And then I think if they go on your website, they'll get even more knowledge and be able to actually overcome the the burnout, the possible burnout that, that might, they might be headed for or are actually in at the moment. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, for myself, uh, personally, by making this change, it's been incredible. Um, taking the load off of me, I, I don't have to grind as much anymore at all. As a matter of fact, I've stopped grinding. Yeah. Um, and 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 it's scary at first, Stacey, because we're so used to constantly yes. pushing and creating, right? Right. But when, when you do pull back, it takes a couple months for us to get used to the new program. Right. And then you're just going to shake your head and say, thank God I did it now. <laughs> that sounds great. I, I, I love that because I think, you know, you know, once, once you actually start making those changes, I think when, once someone takes a brick off their shoulder, they're going to feel like they could fly, you know, yes. they're not going to feel so stuck and so grounded like they, they have been for as long as they may have been. Absolutely, Stacey. Yeah. And we need that break. Everyone, you know, needs this break right now. Uh, give yeah. yourself the gift of this course and this program. Um, you'll be really happy you did. Oh, it sounds wonderful. I, I might even purchase your program. <laughs> Come on in, Stacey. <laughs> I love it. Oh, David, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show, like always. And I, I hope you'll come back and maybe we can hit some more of your topics because, it, you know, you always have so much to say. I love your energy. I love how you are so willing to just come out there and, and you're so sincere about wanting to help people. You can hear it yeah. in your voice, your actions, you know, everything you've done. And I, I think you are just a great contribution to society. And I love oh, that. Thank you, Stacy. You're very That welcome. was beautiful. Oh, I appreciate I love having you. you on the show. Oh, I appreciate you too. And, then you and I'll come back anytime you want. You can come back anytime you want. You tell me the day and you're on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, baby. That sounds great. Thank okay. You, you, so you have much. a beautiful day, Stacey. You too. You have a great day. Okay. <laughs>